Hello. Hello, everyone. It's time for Thought Shifting Thursdays. So a few weeks ago, when my beloved wasn't here, I was talking about um, our title is socialization of women and the socialization of men. How does it affect, affect us? And so I said, when my beloved's back, we'll give you her perspective. So, um, you know, I talked a little bit about for men, obviously, you know, we were taught as children to be strong and not cry and all those things. I think it was it was not it was minimized for me since my father died at seven and I was raised mostly by a, by a female. Um, I find myself more comfortable with women than men uh, as a result of that most of my adult life. I guess that's changed, but but still, if I was going to talk to someone, but that's actually most men will talk about their feelings more with women than they will with men. Um, really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, well, some feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Some things you wouldn't tell them, women. but um, and and then I'm, I'm reading a book now. I listened to a book by Gabor Mate called "The Body um, The Body Keeps Score." And uh, one interesting that I hadn't thought about how it relates to this, but he's talking about when he first got into medicine and um, and incest and and uh, sexual abuse for women was considered not a thing. He said that at the time, the standard, the standard belief was that one in a hundred million women were sexually abused as children. Women didn't talk about it, right? Um, 40, 50 years ago. And, and, um, and, and, and that there were a hundred million women in the country at the time, so he said, how could that be right when I've got 40 of them in my office, <laughs> right, who are, are saying this is a fact? And it, they, the belief, even from from psycho, from you know psych, psychological um, institutions, uh -huh. was that it wasn't a big deal, right? If it, if incest didn't happen, it was didn't cause that much harm. Mm -hmm. So um, we've come a long way, obviously, and and yet I think what what the book that we're I listen to and you're listening to, um, Untamed. Untamed uh, is about is about this socialization and um, so I wanted to check in with you. What's your experience as a woman, and how ha have you been affected by socialization in this culture, but also maybe from your culture of origin, Guatemala? Right, coming from a uh, Latin country, you know, we're we're taught to serve, mm -hmm. to. Um, that we're supposed to be housewives. We're supposed to uh, do everything for our husband and our children. And the last thing you want to do is think about yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, you got over that one. <laughs> 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 you have a good balance. A good healthy balance. Well, it it uh, has taken <clears throat> a, a a lot. You know, I mean, um, I feel like I Americanize pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, when I got here. Um, At 11. Yes. And um, I did marry, the first husband that I married was a Latin American also. And that's where I got in trouble. Because <laughs> <laughs> his idea was w women serve, are, are submissive, and I can beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, um, and so that's what happened to me. And for the grace of God, you know, I got rid of that, that uh, husband pretty quickly. But um, I never, I decided right there and then that that was never going to happen to me. And, you know, I never saw my, my dad um, hit my mom with this respect for, this respect for her, really. It was more like my mom was a slave. She was, she did everything. She, ridiculous things like, you know, you go to the bathroom, you shower, and you pick up your shit, right? Your stuff, your towels, and no, my mom will have to pick up his stuff. Hmm. Who, who the heck does that? <laughs> Even now, in their 80s, hmm. sometimes she's still doing that. Hmm. Because that's just the way it was, and, and it just... The training was so ingrained into both of them, really, 
that it's, you know, she's just like, instead of fighting, oh, I'll just pick it up because it'll just cause problems. Mm -hmm. So, um, but for me, I just uh, decided that, no, that, that it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. Both people have to do the same kind of work. And yes, I still, inside of me, there's still a little bit of me that says, men are supposed to take care of me. Mm -hmm. My husband is supposed to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And you do. You yeah. do a, a damn good job of taking care of me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I try. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this last night. <laughs> um, I do my damnness. <laughs> I know you try. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but... Um, you know, it's it's the programming. <coughs> it's, it's really hard to um, unprogram yourself. Right. You know, I was just reading um, something online. Uh, I, I get these messages from, um, I forget <coughs> what group it is, but it's a Native American um, community, and it was talking about Cherokee women. The, the, in the Cherokee <coughs> tribe, in the old days, uh, and to those who still practice it, uh, the women, the woman is the the leader of the household, and mm -hmm. that can happen in our culture too. But even to the point that if a um, let's see if I can remember this right, <clears throat> if a if a if a man and woman get divorced, then it's it's like the woman's bloodline that matters, mm -hmm. right? And huh. so if um, Interesting. Yeah, I can't remember all the details, but but like if, well, one thing was it's right if um, I can't remember now, but mm. but it was all about it, almost the opposite of our culture the, the and women. Latin culture mm -hmm. is the the w women ruled and they owned the property, right? So if the man left or there was a divorce or something, a woman got the property, right. and and you if as an heir, unless. It was from your mother. You didn't get anything, right? If, from your children. Yeah. So really, really kind of fascinating. Um, but you know, and, and what about the fact that women, you know, have is still, you know, get less pay? And I mean, have have you experienced that in the workplace as being an issue, or any other way that, you know, I mean, 60, 70 years ago, women were. I mean, when did women first get to vote in the 30s, maybe? Not you know, that long so, ago. <laughs> and and, and Afri actually, um, Af African Americans who were slaves at one point um, could vote before women could vote, right? So women right. were considered second-hand citizens. Third. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so any of that um, socialization affect you? Uh, you know, I've, I've never been um, in the believer that, that that was the case mm -hmm. for me. I've always worked from the way down, up, upwards mm -hmm. in any job that I that I held. Um, I've always was promoted and looked at. Oh, she can do a better job here. Or she's better at doing this, and they've always moved me around. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about the fact that they pay me less. Yeah, yeah. So I was it's one of the lucky ones, I guess. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know. As I was saying to you before we start of this is <clears throat> in a way I've never I've never until this book I've never really fully appreciated how much of a liability it could be to be born a woman in this, in oh, this yes, culture absolutely um, because you know I, I was growing up in the 60s and it was all about women's lib and, and women taking power and I had a mother as I shared in the video a couple weeks ago who was you know who was a powerful woman before it was popular. I mean, mm -hmm. she was born in uh, 1919. And uh, and I don't know when she became as empowered as she was when she Probably was my when mother. Her, when her husband died, she had yeah, to figure out how to survive. That certainly had a lot of, of it. Of course. But, but I, think, I think she was born that way, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, she always just had a, a, a strong self-esteem and a strong, wouldn't let people, you know, tell her what to do. I mean, there's there's certain things that I admire uh, uh, so much for my mother. You know, she was the one that decided that the uh, North was the best place for the family. 
that, that that's where we were going to be able to to uh, make our living. And she's the one, the first one that came up here. Mm -hmm. Not my dad, my mom. Right. And you know, by herself, right? Or yeah. Well, uh, yes, by herself. There yeah, was somebody. There was a, a, her. Her um, brother was already here, and my mm -hmm. aunt. But um, and they're the ones that were like, "Come on, you can, you can come. It's okay, you know." Mm. But um, you know, in, in the book that we were also you're teaching, mm. it said to make um, a list of all of the good things and bad things about your mother. Mm. And I, I was making a list, <clears throat> and that was in the good part and also <coughs> in the bad part because. Yes, she came up here to look for a better uh, future for us, but she left us behind. Mm. And, you know, we've never mm. really, I think that has affected us tremendously. Yeah, that, that constel uh, family constellation you did was all yes. about feeling abandoned. Of course. Uh, for a time by your mother. Um, and the book, by the way, is, is Untamed by Gwen and Doyle, right? Mm -hmm. um, another thing, speaking of immigrating to this country, and immigration's a big deal now, Yes, is she was talking about, she's a big social activist, and she was talking about, um, you know, she was a popular writer before she announced that she was gay and left her husband for a woman, and, and then a lot of her, uh, you know, audience turned against her, right, because right. it was a whole, she was a Christian writer, and then that you know, all shifted, right, or right. evolved for her. And so one woman came up to her, and she was doing social activism about um, about the atro atrocities that were going on a few years ago when you know they was not children, the children were in, in and separate cages the kids and all that. So you got to that part of the book, yes. and she said, you know, someone came up to her and said, you know, I really love your writing and everything, but um, but it seems like you care more about you know children from other countries, and you, you care about our people, right? right. <laughs> and um, and I, I don't know if I can quote this very well, but she said, she what she said in response to that, oh, because the woman said to her um, uh, something like, you know, these people, um, you know, if they cared about their children, they wouldn't come here, right? And 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 so and she, the opposite, and really. she turned it around and said, right. "You mean if you were a mother who is being in in a gang ridden society where your children aren't safe, you wouldn't take a risk of coming yeah. here and Somewhere all else. the challenges right. to go to keep your children safe, and just turned it around for them." So I thought that was a really poignant way to. to yes, it. it's a it's a big deal. Immigration is a big deal, and you know. Um, I feel for those people. I mean, nobody wants to leave the country. We people love where they were born. Mm -hmm. If they could make a living and they could uh, they could live safely and without people um, killing each other everywhere, or the political uproar, uproar mm -hmm. in in a lot of Latin America, it's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And actually, the uh, gangs that that came from the United States, you know, that, and they were living here, they became gang members, and they figured out how to do gangs, mm. and then they came down to Latin America, and that's what was uh, the, the big deal then. Mm. Mm. They started forming these gangs in El Salvador, in Nicaragua, and, and Guatemala, and all different places, which made it <coughs> unsafe, mm -hmm. not for all of the other things that could be unsafe, that made it even worse yeah. to live there. Well, this is a whole other topic we're going on. Maybe we'll talk more <laughs> about this next next week. Maybe. <clears throat> so, anything else about uh, socialization of <sighs> women? It's hard women? to it's hard to to break free from it. You know, it but, just occurred to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most of uh, and there's a lot of dynamics that contribute to this. But most of the self-help authors are men, and most of the self-help audience are women. Mm. So it's like men, women going to men to learn how to, and, and maybe because it's a male-dominated society, right. that that in a way makes sense, because mm -hmm. women in some ways need to be more like men to succeed in this 
culture, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's really, it's really powerful to see women. One time, um, when I was at Sage Publications and, and we had some, um, some co consultants coming in and, and this woman told a story. She said there was, she was in an uh, upper level, upper management meeting and, and one of the men was criticizing one of the women and she was the only woman in upper management at, at, at that meeting. Mm -hmm. And she said that the woman started to cry. And then one of the men came over to console her and she said, please don't console me. This is how I express my anger and my hurt. Mm -hmm. And it like, I'm getting chills as I said it because it changed the consultant, right? Yeah. It changed the entire of course. Uh, level of the room. Because and you she can't, was, you can't show that that side of you right. most of the time. But she did, and she yes. was able to because she wasn't ashamed of it, right? And not to say that you know that's one of the things I shared about it was is what Glennon Doyle says is that you know we think of certain qualities being female co qualities and certain qualities being male qualities and she said maybe that's just part of the social construct you know I think to some degree mm. generally speaking women do tend to be more emotional than men but there are exceptions to that and you're, so to, you're to, very emotional right so to put people into that peg isn't always helpful mm -hmm. um, sometimes it is sometimes it isn't but and I'm very com com confronted 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 uh -huh. yeah well, you're a powerful woman, you know, that's what I was saying, is that, you know, having a, a powerful female model in my mom and and you, I've never, I don't, on my day-to-day, -day experience this kind of socialization as an issue, but I see that it's there, and for many, many women who haven't had those kinds of models, yes. um, and men as well, then well, it's, and it's you, very and, different. And <clears throat> you will learn it by what you experience out in the world, you know, sure. I mean, my girls are are both struggling, you know, mm -hmm. to survive in the world. Um, my, my younger daughter, Allison, who has been living in Japan for a year and a half. Oh, yeah, in a you very know, ma she's, matriarchal society. Yes, she is just... Did she, I say matriarchal? I meant patriarchal. She yeah. loved the idea of going to Japan, uh, loved mm -hmm. Jap Japanese culture and art, and she all her, she wanted to do was to go to Japan and learn how to speak Japanese and be involved in the culture. And after a year of being there, she said to me, these people will never accept me. Yeah. They, do, they will not accept me because I'm different. And because she's white, she's a little bit overweight, you know, she's not petite, she's not... She's got tattoos. <laughs> you know, she's got some tattoos, and she <clears throat> just said, they look at me like and I'm she's some a, kind of a monster or she's something. She's a, you know, bisexual, gay woman who, um, queer probably might be her term, I don't know <laughs> what it is these days. And, and you know, we had a and client... It's not acceptable but uh, but uh, you you know better than than us about this Naomi. But we had a client here mm. who actually lives there, married a Japanese woman, and uh, had two children. One looks more Japanese than the other, and the one that doesn't is discriminated against because and they're both discriminated discri against. But one but is more, more the lighter your skin, the more you're discriminated against. Right. Um, so you know, I mean. Um, I don't know how horrible it is there, but yeah. I well, will never be able to put up with that. <laughs> My <laughs> God. Well, yeah, we'd love to. We, Naomi usually says something, but um, yeah, I wonder what that's like from you, for mm -hmm. you, being your heritage. Um, and, you know, and, and so that, you know, maybe that points to the fact that um, how far we have come in our society and yet still how far we have to go. To go. Mm -hmm. And there are mm -hmm. many other countries that have a much further way to go than we do. Um, I was treated different there and here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. the, the only uh, the other not thing that Japanese I've... Japanese enough, not white enough. Oh, so mm -hmm. in both cultures. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Um, yeah, yes, the only big thing that I remember as a woman is 
men will value more, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in Latin America. Right. My mom had five girls uh -huh. looking for that boy. Mm -hmm. And once she had that boy, it was like my dad was in heaven, mm -hmm. you know. He could not, couldn't be a, a family if that boy wasn't there. Mm. Yeah. And boy, I'm glad that they did that because my brother is, is fantastic. And he's, he's the man of the, you know, he's like the protector of everybody nowadays. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I mean, that, 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 I don't think that's changed. What was that march that we were on uh, several years ago when all the women were wearing the pussy hats? <laughs> 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 so... Yes. Um, Keep on marching, keep on speaking out, keep on owning your power, women and men. Men are owning, not going to give it to you. You and, better fight for it. And men owning your uh, feminine side, you know, your, your sensitivity as well. Mm -hmm. So that's our message for today. And, uh, and <laughs> ah, Naomi says, yes, boys are golden. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So let's... Uh, Let's shift it around. We need more women in leadership. You know, um, what was it? Bill Morrow was recently saying, um, oh yeah, that's too, too, too involved to get into the transgender thing, but just the point, but the point he was making is that, you know, there aren't a lot of murders being done by women. There aren't a lot of child abuse being done or sexual abuse being done by women, right? It's, uh, it's a vast majority by men. So we need more women in leadership, in more women in power, and um, let's create balance. I'm a Libra. I love balance. All right. Love <laughs> you guys. I'm a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your week and a fantastic weekend. Take care.